What's going on everybody? It is raining outside, so I thought I would take this opportunity to finish a review I've had in progress for weeks now. It is a review of my very own bomb track Beyond Plus 2 2018. I've had it for about nine months and I've put a fair whack of kilometers on it. And I thought it was time to make a review. And it is a slightly difficult bike to review. You have to review it kind of twice. The bike that it is and the bike that it can be. Before I kick off though, as always, there is a link in the description below to a review on La Vela Cheetah. Head on down there if you want to read my full written review there. And let's hit it. The Bomb Track Beyond Plus 2 is a rigid steel adventure slash bike packing weapon. I put in my order for one pretty much immediately after I finished riding the Mawson Trail last year, which I did on a bit of a clunker little specialized Rock Hopper 29. As much as me and the bike bonded on that ride, I wanted something better when I got back because I had an awesome time. Adventure biking is freaking great, but I wanted a good adventure bike to do it on. Something that was, oh, I don't know, steel, rigid, had all kinds of awesome touches on it little things here and there that make it an awesome adventure bike and you know maybe something that could be a, a basic mountain bike as well and bam bomb track put up pictures of their beyond plus two while i was doing the trail and i kind of knew i had to have one so now i do so let's start with the bike that it is and it is a surprisingly capable little mountain bike one that i've had a ton of fun riding around on and there's a reason for that. And it starts with one important thing. Now, Bomb Track have done a damn good job just starting with cross country geometry. You stack the geometry numbers against something like a specialized chisel hardtail, and they're almost identical. Even something like a Trek Pro Caliber, very close again, not quite the same as with the chisel. And that's really what makes the bike so fun to ride. It just has damn good geometry. At the front, they've mixed a fairly slack head ankle with a 55 mil stem. That means it's very stable when you want, but also steers quite quickly when you need. And that carbon fork at the front end gives the steering a very low point of inertia. So it doesn't take a lot of effort to turn the bars. You don't have to overcome a heavy fork or something like that. It, it's got a very light front end. So that means this little steel hardtail is a lot more nimble than you think. One of the things that really turns heads is the wheel and tire combo. The WT Trailblazers are 2.8 inches wide and they're grabbing onto a WTB Scraper I-40 rim. That is 40 millimeters wide. It is absolutely gigantic. And the bike comes with tubes in it, but I pretty much went tubeless as soon as I could. Those tubes are huge and weigh about 350 grams. So tubeless, I managed to bring the weight of the bike down to 12.4 kilos, and now I can run it at about 15 to 18 psi. And that is very important because it is a rigid bike. The tires have to do grip and suspension fundamentally at the same time. So you want to be able to run a really low pressure. And on the tires, they're a really interesting choice. They are definitely more for the adventure slash gravel slash bikepacking application. As a traditional mountain biking tire, they're a bit lacking. Now the reason for that is that they can roll very, very quickly. The tread pattern with the strip that runs right down the middle means it just rumbles over the top of everything. And it is very, very fast. It rolls up to speed seriously quickly. I've given this bike to friends who've ridden it and they've all been shocked at how quickly this thing will bang along. The trade-off for that is grip. The tires just don't bite that deeply. So if you're out doing proper mountain biking, it gets pretty rowdy at the back end. Again, an understandable compromise given what this bike is actually made for. I've really come to enjoy the one by SRAM GX Eagle I know the one by versus double is a bit of a controversial topic among mountain bikers, but personally, I've ridden both. As long as they're well maintained and they work, doesn't really bother me either way. The shifting on the GX Eagle is very, very good. You can do a big sweep shift down to jump over four cogs with one shove of the lever. And that's awesome. It means that you're rarely caught out by a sudden pinch. 
Unfortunately, going up in the other direction, you can only do individual clicks. So the reality of one buy is that at the moment, changing chain rings on a two buy is still the fastest way to change big chunks of ratios. That said, I think SRAM have done a damn good job with this system. One thing I'm not super stoked on though is the lever placement. The up and down shifts are kind of crammed into this little pod underneath the bar and it gets kind of a, a bit busy under there when you're trying to change gear in a hurry. Shimano's trigger and thumb system is for me the better system overall. This is running a 32 tooth chain ring at the front and up to a 50 at the back and a lot of people think that'll give you free reign to climb up vertical walls and that's not really the case. The reality is by the time you're getting to 25 or 30% you still have the gearing but it's the traction that you're going to run out of first. So this will get you right to the point where things are going to get very very difficult to ride anyway. And really I've used the 3250 quite a lot. There's plenty of steep stuff around where I ride so I really appreciate having that big gear range. The GX Eagle is matched to the TLM level brakes and they're fine. Once again with the bomb track they've just gone with a sensible and functional choice with the group set. It works, it's been really reliable, the shifting has been very consistent over more than 3000 Ks. Now it's not all good news up and down the bike, to hit that $3200 price point they've had to make a few compromises and that is pretty much all in the finishing kit. So the seat post, the bars and the stem, they're all fine, they're bomb track branded aluminium and they're kind of okay but the problem is with a rigid bike, kind of cheaper kit like that can make a really big difference to the comfort. So there's almost no flex in the seat post, there's almost no flex in the handlebars and that means it gets a bit uncomfortable when things are really bumpy. A flexi carbon post and a flexi carbon bar would really make a big difference to how this bike feels over rougher terrain. I actually did like the Bomb Track branded saddle though. It's got a nice shape and it's got a nice amount of padding so I probably will keep that one on rather than replacing it. So that should give you an idea of what the bike is. But Bomb Track have built in all these little touches and features that mean it could be something completely different. Let's start up the front with those forks. And they have been designed very specifically for bike packing and adventure riding. There are mounts all the way up both sides. So you can chuck some cages on there and carry a fair amount of stuff. There is an entry at the bottom around the hub and an exit at the top of the fork where you can pass a dynamo cable through if you're running a dynamo setup. Nice feature. But what I really love is that the geometry is suspension corrected, so you can put a suspension fork in the front of it, no worries at all. That's something that I might do in the future, just to make it a little bit more forgiving when I'm actually mountain biking on the thing. Next, there is a dropper post exit port just above the bottom bracket on the non-drive side. So you can put a dropper post in, again, turn it into a more capable mountain bike. And then there's the awesome variety of mounts you've got. Inside the triangle, there's multiple mount points for multiple bottle cages. There's another one underneath the bottom bracket. There are rack mounting points on the back. This thing has so many little touches in it that make it great for bikepacking and I have done some bikepacking on it just a light overnight trip I did out to the Riverland a couple of hundred k's from Adelaide carrying some spare clothes and whatnot and I had an absolutely great time those big tires just rumbled over everything I had the gear range I needed the position was probably a little bit more upright than I would like for a bikepacking rig next time I do one that's a little bit longer I think I'll chuck a longer stem on it, get that position a little bit further forward because I felt a bit upright and cramped. 55 mil, not a very long stem. To kind of sum up the Bomb Track Beyond Plus 2, I would say it's kind of a blank slate of a bike. It has so many features and design touches that mean you can do a whole lot of stuff with it. You can make a hardcore bikepacking adventure rig with a dynamo and racks on the back. You can keep it just as a fully rigid, fun mountain bike. Or you can chuck a suspension fork in the front, a dropper post under your bum, and have a very capable hardtail. All for a pretty reasonable $3,200. Bomb Track have really brought that price down nicely to a very accessible price point given the quality of componentry they've put on them. So if you're looking for something that's a bit of a rugged and ready mountain adventure bikepacking rig, I think there's so many great things about the Bomb Track Beyond Plus 2. So much so that I bought it and I still have it and I love it. And I'm looking forward to doing more stuff on this thing in the future. 
Chuck it on the list if you're looking at buying into this segment. And have a look at all the other bikes across the bomb track range. They do an incredible job of just making well specced and well thought out bikes. And that's where I'm gonna wrap it up guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this rainy day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that stuff. Stick around and watch some more videos if you want. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.